Oh Satan, oh Satan, please leave me alone. I'm going to see Jesus in my heavenly home. Oh Satan, oh Satan. Water is on, crank the heat up. It is officially trap preparation day. And the first step is dyeing our traps. In our first trapping video, we covered uh, a lot of the tools and, and spoke about why we dye and wax our traps again. But again, dyeing process um, helps keep rust at bay and helps neutralize odors. Those are the two main reasons for dyeing traps and it also helps your trap blend in with the soil. So first step of the process for dyeing and waxing and getting them ready for the field is uh, dyeing your traps. So we got the water on, um, we'll get that boiling and, and add our dye. In the meantime, we've also got to get nails inside of our traps, inside of the jaws. And we'll go over that here in just a second. But the water's on and uh, the process is underway. One thing you want to be real careful of is watching your water and not letting it boil over. I don't know what it is, but some reason when you put that dye in, it tends to bubble a lot. And once we get really rocking and rolling and heating up, it's going to want to flow over. So you got to watch your water temperature. Once you get it boiling, just turn it down to like a simmer. Turn your gas down to a simmer and, uh, and then start dumping your traps in. But just turn it up and I am not ashamed to say I'm using a pink hanger. All right, the water is on. Wait, we're waiting for it to boil so we can put our dye in and get that started. But while we're doing that, while we're waiting, we've got to go around to all the traps and put nails in between the jaws. Now, why, why do we do that? Why is it important? Well, a good illustration is on a straight jaw trap. The reason we do the nail trick is because if I don't have this nail in here, the dye and the wax can't get in between the jaws. So you're gonna have that missing and the jaws will tend to rust out a little bit quicker. So just a quick little trick is to put a nail in between the jaws. Now on offset jaws, it's not so crucial because they're already offset, there's space between the jaws um, and you're just gonna have a little spot on each side that doesn't have dye or wax on it. But I like, still like to do it. It's a quick, easy trick to get dye and wax in between all your jaws. So we gotta go around, we got about four dozen traps to do this too. The hamstrings will be feeling good about tomorrow morning from bending over to do it, but it's a process and a step that needs to be done. All right, so our water has reached temperature finally. We got it to the boiling point and then, so it doesn't overflow because again, that dye likes to bubble and overflow if you don't watch it. So it, so, we, so it doesn't do that, we cut it down to a simmer. Now we get to dump traps in. We'll give them about a half hour to simmer in there. We'll check the color of one, pull one out, check its color. If we like it, we'll go ahead and pull the rest out, put a new batch in. If we don't, we'll just leave it simmer for a little bit longer, but we are dying traps. That is a wrap on getting that step in the process done. Tomorrow I'll come out and uh, wax them, dip them in wax. That is another easy process, just takes a little bit of time, a little bit of know-how, and you can get it done. But all the traps are dyed. They look good, nice and dark in color. Just got to let them drip dry overnight and uh, move on to the wax tomorrow. The wax is on, wax on, wax off. We are on to the waxing process of getting our trap preparation finished. And I just put the wax on. It's gonna take about 45 minutes or so to heat up. Uh, one key part of waxing your traps is not letting your uh, wax get too hot. You don't wanna burn it. You don't wanna start a fire, obviously. Um, if you think about it, wax can hold scent. So when trapping season is over, and I want to store my wax, I store it inside the pot, inside a garbage bag. 
I want to keep all odors at bay if I can. But anyways, we're on to the waxing process. Why do we wax our traps? Well, again, I think we covered this in our first video, but we wax them for several reasons. Number one, it helps with smooth trap operation. Number two, just like the dye, it helps keep odor at bay. And number three, it helps keep rust at bay. So uh, adds a protective layer between your steel of your trap and the environmental conditions. So as you can see, we've got the traps. They look pretty nice and dark, ready to go into the wax. It'll take about 45 minutes for this to heat up. Uh, I'm gonna keep an eye on it, don't want it to burn, start smoking, etc., because it will attract that uh, scent of burnt wax. We don't want that. So anyways, I'm gonna let that heat up and we'll get on to dipping these babies in the wax. All right. Yep, no chunks. Our wax is to temperature. I've turned down the burner a fair amount because I just want to make sure that wax is melted. I don't want to raise that temperature too high because it'll start to smoke, start to burn. So now what I'm going to do is take four traps. And the first two traps, again, I'm handling with gloves only, but the first two traps, I'm going to dip for five seconds and then hang them. The next two, I'm gonna dip for seven seconds and hang them, and then I'm gonna let all four cool. And the reason I'm doing this test is you're putting cold steel into warmer hot wax, and I want just the right amount of wax on my traps. What's the right amount? I want that chain just stiff enough that it holds its own weight, essentially. There's one for about five seconds, a five count. So, you know, if I was doing this during the summer, it'd probably be even a shorter count because I'm, I would be dealing with warmer traps, warmer steel. I'm dealing with pretty cold steel. It's about 42 degrees today. So a nice five to seven count is probably where it's gonna be at, but that's why I gotta test it out to make sure. All right, now I'm gonna do two at a seven count. So really, once you get going, it doesn't take all that long. Yeah, you're doing one at a time, but you're only putting them in there for five to seven seconds, typically. And then I will also do my trap stakes. That's one thing I didn't cover the other day, is that I dyed the first six, eight inches of my trap stakes as well. Just want to eliminate as much human or uh, unnatural odor from my trap set as I can. And those stakes will rust. So, so an animal, a critter, a fox, a coyote, will be able to pick up on that rust. Usually it's not that big a deal at the stake location, it's more at the trap location, but if I can help it, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, dip the top of those stakes in the dye and the wax so all right now we've got four traps we'll let those babies cool for 10 minutes or so all right we've let the traps cool for about 10 minutes now it's time to check and see how we did on our timing as far as five seven seconds what's got enough wax simple way to do it hold the trap straight out and if the chain holds itself up i know i've got about the right amount of wax the seven second guys seem to be doing just fine. Five seconds. I like that a little bit better. I can just feel it. I've done it enough. I like the amount of wax that the five second guys seem to have a little bit better than the seven seconds. So these will be fine. I can go ahead and use them, but now we get to go uh, trap after trap after trap and get them all done. This will take oh, roughly half hour, maybe. So. Hang them up, let them cool for 15 minutes or so, and uh, just keep doing them one after another. To a trapper's eye, there aren't many things in the world that look finer than a freshly waxed trap, and we are done. Other than fur flopping. Fur flopping in the trap probably ranks above a freshly waxed trap for sure. 
Nonetheless, that is a wrap on our trap preparation video for waxing and dyeing. Next video, we'll be actually putting sets out in the field. And during that, we'll go over some, some tips and tricks on how we analyze a farm, pick out a trap site, the lures we use, how we set our sets, so on and so forth. So anyways, that is a wrap on this particular video. Um, please, if you like what you saw or have questions or comments or your own tips or tricks, please leave a comment down in the comment section below, if you will. Um, you know, that's the one thing about the will hunt life. We are not professionals by any stretch of the imagination. We just love to do it, and we've probably got a little bit more experience than a lot of people out there in the field just because of our age. Um, so we like to share our tips and tricks, but we don't know it all. And that's the fun thing about hunting and trapping in general is other people have other knowledge that they can share. So if you have a tip or trick that you like to use with your trapping preparation, please also leave that in the comment section below and we'll share that. But that's a wrap. Um, traps are done. Now it's time to get them in the field.